In this video, I'm going to walk you through the basics of using the eye tracker components in PsychoPie. These components have been around a while, I think since 2023, but we're hoping to get you some more useful information on how to actually use them. So please let us know in the comments if you find this helpful, if you have any further questions, and we'll continue to try and make content that's useful for you. So all components that are used for eye tracking can, surprise, surprise, be found in the eye tracking section of the component panel. In this panel, we've got a calibration routine, a validation routine, a record component for simply turning on and off your eye tracker, and a region of interest component, which is something that comes in very handy, I think, when designing your experiments. To start with, you'll probably want to add a calibration routine to your experiment. This will open up a standalone routine like this, which means you do have to click insert routine, select that calibration routine and pop it on your flow wherever you want that to be in your experiment. You can manipulate a few things about your calibration procedure. So for example, you can say how many points you want to present on the screen. For now, I'm just gonna say three so that this is a quick experiment for me to test. After your calibration, you will probably want to validate that everything went smoothly with that calibration. You can then select eye tracker validation from the component panel. And just like before, you want to insert routine, select that validation routine and put it on your flow. To make this a quick experiment to test, I'm going to change the number of targets to three on that as well. After this, we're going to show some basic instructions so that your participant knows to get started with the task. So I've just added a instructions routine here with some instructions text telling the participant to press space to start as well as a keyboard component. Now, what we do need to do at the very beginning of our experiment is we also need to turn on the eye tracker, which might seem a little counterintuitive given that it has, of course, been turned on for our calibration and validation. But nonetheless, we do need to make sure that we integrate that. So to do that, we can go to eye tracking. We select eye tracker record. And in these basic properties, you can control record actions. Now, what we're gonna do is we are going to start only. So we're going to initiate the recording in the instructions routine, allow it to continue recording through a series of trials, and then we will probably end the recording at the end of the experiment. Alternatively, you could use start and stop if you just wanted to have individual recordings for each of your trials. Now we need to add some content to our actual trial routine. Now I'm not going to make a full on experiment here. I'm just going to present a shape on the screen and ask my participant to look at it in order for the task to progress. So it's a very, very basic gaze contingent paradigm. So I'm going to add myself a shape. Let's just say I'll leave it as triangle we'll leave it on screen infinitely because it's going to be removed from the screen when the participant looks at it. And I'm going to make it a little bit smaller and I will position that on the left hand side of the screen for now. Now what I'm going to do is I want to overlay a region of interest on top of this polygon. So to do that, I'm going to use the region of interest component and the parameters of a region of interest component are conveniently identical to a polygon. So I'm going to make its duration infinite. I can select from a range of shapes. For now, I'm just going to leave it as triangle because that's the same shape as my target. And here we have a number of end routine on options. We're going to end a routine when we look at the target. So we're making it gaze contingent. We can specify the minimum look time. I'm going to leave this as default. I do want to make sure that the size of my region of interest and its position are the same as my target. And in the data tab, I also have a number of options for saving. For instance, I could save only the first look, the last look or every look. So I'm going to leave every look here, which means that even looks that are less than 100 milliseconds are going to be stored to my data file. Finally, in the testing tab, 
By default, a region of interest is actually invisible because, of course, usually we don't want that to be displayed to the participant. But if we turn on debug mode, this will make it so that region of interest is, is visible while we are testing. So we can see what that looks like. Last but not least, I'm going to just add a thanks routine to the end of my experiment. It's just going to be some text that says goodbye. And also this allows me a space to have an eye tracker, let's call it eye tracker stop component. And we are going to set the action to stop. Now, before we test our task, we do need to make sure that it's set up in order to actually connect with our eye tracker. So to do that, we can go into our experiment settings. And in our experiment settings, there is this tab here called eye tracking. By default, eye tracker device is going to be set to none. And when you select this for the first time, you might see one option, and that option should be mouse gaze. If you select mouse gaze, you have a number of parameters you can change. Mouse gaze is essentially a way of using your mouse cursor as a way of simulating eye movements while you are not connected to your eye tracker. So if you're following along with this tutorial, you probably want to use mouse gaze. If you are using a different eye tracker, so for example, Toby, Gaze Point, Pupil Labs, SR Research, also known as iLink, then you might not see those options in this drop down here. If you go to your component panel and select get more, that will open up the plugins and packages manager. And in here, for example, you can see I've already got the Toby plugin installed, but let's say if I wanted gaze point, I could search here and I could install that plugin. I would after installation want to restart my PsychoPy application. And then when I go back to my experiment settings, I should then be able to see the option for that eye tracker in my drop down. Since I am using mouse gaze, there's one more tweak I need to make. In experiment settings on the screen tab, I do want to make sure I can see my cursor. So I'm going to say show mouse just while I'm testing my mouse gaze eye tracking experiment. So typically we would recommend running your experiment first in pilot mode. However, in this case, I am going to actually switch my experiment to run mode just so that everything is running in full screen for my calibration. Now I'm going to try my experiment. So let's give it a run. So I can see press space to start the calibration. Let's see what happens. I move my mouse cursor to over each of these points. Calibration is complete. Now I can press space and now I'm starting the validation. So I now need to move my cursor over each of those points. Okay, so here I can see the results of my validation. It looks pretty good. Each of the colored points shows the measured locations relative to those validation targets. You can also see the validation results at the top. So this is the mean deviation from that point and the min and max. I do get asked quite a lot, what's a reasonable level um, of deviation in validation? Really, this depends on your paradigm. How small is your region of interest, for example? If you need very precise measurements in a small region of interest, then you need more stringent criteria for your validation results. So now I'm pressing space to get started. So I'm expecting to see just a shape on the screen that I look towards and then my task should end because I only have one trial in this experiment. So there's my shape. I can actually see a little red line around it indicating that it's got the region of interest on there. I'm going to look at it and then that ends my experiment. One more note for your eye tracking experiments. In experiment settings in the data tab, you will want to probably select to save the HDF5 file. This will save a very a rich data format about all of the eye tracking events that take place in your experiment. I think we'll have a separate video where we cover what HDF5 files look like and how to handle them. For now, you just want to know you do want to select that before running your experiment. 
So that's a very basic walkthrough of the eye tracking components in PsychoPi. If you've got any questions, please let us know in the comments or go to discourse.psychopi.org and let us know what more content you might like. Otherwise, I hope you enjoy using PsychoPi and uh, watch more tutorials. <laughs>